Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. You know, you see a lot of talk these days uh, about judging and uh, don't judge or what should we judge or who should judge. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit today, but let's pray first. Uh, Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for that salvation, Lord, and we thank you for your word. Um, just be with us in these next few moments in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, I want to read a, a little parable out of Luke chapter 18 today and uh, it's very familiar to all of us. Uh, and uh, Jesus uh, in verse nine, it says, uh, and he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You know, you see some guys right now on the internet and stuff, and a lot of them street preachers, that say, no, I repented of all my sins, and I don't sin anymore. Well, I mean, that's just delusional. And really, it's a serious misunderstanding of what sin is. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is anything less than absolute perfection as found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Here on this earth, everything we do is somewhat tainted. There is no sinless perfection until we get our new glorified bodies. As long as we're in this body of sins of the flesh, we're not sinlessly perfect. And if a person thinks like, like this publican, remember what, remember what this publican said? He, he, and he probably wasn't lying when, when he says, uh, um, he says, I, uh, he says, I, I give tithes of all I possess. Uh, I'm, I'm not an extortioner. I'm not an adulterer. Uh, you know, he says, and, and he's probably telling the truth. And, and, and that's what some of these people do. Well, they, uh, uh, I, I don't break the Ten Commandments. I, 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 listen, mm -hmm. sin goes deeper than, than the Ten Commandments. Sin is missing the mark. The mark is the target. It's the bullseye. If you aren't absolutely as 100% pure as the Lord Jesus Christ, then there is sin in your physical body and uh so that that's one thing we wanted to look at and we wanted to address there is no such thing as sinless perfection now had had there been someone who was sinlessly perfect he would be the one to be able to judge and we see that um with jesus and the woman taken in adultery he says let he that is without sin cast the first stone and there was only one standing there without sin, and you noticed he didn't cast a stone. Amen. Now uh, we 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 look at things in a very worldly sense, and 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 that's like Paul said. He said, "You that judge yourselves by yourselves, uh, you're not wise." Because listen, there's always somebody worse than you, like this like this publican in the temple. He was able to feel good about himself because he said, well, <laughs> I'm not like that guy, right? But the reason that the publican, who was a sinner, he knew he was a sinner. 
and he was real with God, and he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He didn't stand there and try to justify himself by his own works and his own behavior. He knew what he was. He knew, and he was real with God about it. And that's just how we stay right with God. We just got to be 100 with God and, and keep it real with God. Don't justify. Don't make excuses. When, hey, when, when, when we're in a mess, just be real. Say, look, God, this, this is what I'm in. That's what I'm struggling with. I've got a problem with. I, I need you to help me here. Woo, woo, woo. And God will work with somebody that's being real with him. Amen. So, you know, when you look at these, uh, um, you know, who could judge who, and there's always somebody better than you, and there's always someone worse than you. Uh, here's, here's a good prison example. In, in prison, you have general population, all right? And then over here, you have protective custody. So who was in protective custody? Well, that was snitches and child molesters and rapos, all right? So we called them touchers and tellers. So over here in protective custody was the touchers and the tellers. But now the guys in general population, you know, they, they, they were, uh, you know, the guys with honorable crimes, right? Uh, they, everybody, they looked down on the touchers and tellers. As a matter of fact, there was like a rule if you got anywhere near a toucher and teller and, and, and you didn't put hands on him, then your own people would put hands on you. Uh, so, I mean, it was they, they were they were considered the scum of the earth to the guys in general population who were what just dopers and robbers and 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 murderers and, you know, honorable crimes. Right. So. Think about this the same way that the guys in general population felt about the guys in protective custody, the touchers and tellers. Well, that's the same way honest, hardworking people out here in society think about those guys in general population, <laughs> the robbers, the murderers, the dope sellers, the, the what have you, the honorable criminals, right? So, so the same way they're looking at the at the PCs, the protective custody guys, that's the same way with, you know, regular people, uh, honest, law-abiding members of society out here are looking at them, right? So, <laughs> hey, there's always somebody better, and there's always somebody worse. Now, all these honest, hard-working, law-abiding citizens out here, listen, the same way that they're looking at the guys in general population in prison is the same way that God is looking at them. Uh, uh, look at, at the cross. The playing field is leveled. I mean, the guys, the guys in PC might be here. <laughs> and, the, and the guys in g general population, they might be here. And, and the guys and the people, a law-abiding citizens out in society... They might be here. <laughs> but God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is so much higher, so much farther above them that they all look at the same level to Him. And we all do. The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, it, it is a level playing field, and we all come just the same before the Lord Jesus as a sinner. So who can judge who? Well, we're called to judge righteous judgment. Amen. And that's not judging someone else and where they are in their relationship with the Lord. That judgment that you see in the Bible is generally judging truth and error. It's like the judging the leaven of the Pharisees. It generally has to do with false teaching and false doctrine. That is something we can judge. We don't judge it on our own standing or our own righteousness. We judge it because we have the 100% inspired, pure, preserved, and perfect Word of God. And the Word of God judges doctrine. The Word of God judges any kind of denominational teaching, any kind of any scholar's opinion, any type of any, anybody's opinion. It don't matter. This book 
will judge them. But when it comes to individual sinners and what this guy's struggling with and what this guy's struggling with, etc., you, you can't judge that because you are not them. You're not in their life. You didn't start where they started. Think about this. Someone who grew up in church, got saved at a young age, lived for the Lord. I mean, they never got into the world. They, they, they never, never smoked or, or drank or, or did drugs or uh, uh, all the other things that come with, with somebody who was deep into sin, deep into the world, right? So they have a different struggle in their flesh with different things. Most of their stuff will be matters of the heart, will just, will just be, uh, you know, uh, uh, being maybe judgmental or unkind or unforgiving or a little selfish or, you know, they're just, they, they're not out ripping and running and, and robbing banks and shooting dope is what I'm saying. But now you get somebody else over here who was the vilest, the vilest of sinners. Well, he's got a whole different trick bag going on in his flesh. He's dealing with a whole different lifetime of stuff that's in his flesh. You can't judge him from where he is right now because you don't know where he started. You don't know how far he has come. Yeah, he might look like a mess. But you should have saw him a few years ago. He was a way worse mess. So you can't you can't just look at somebody and say, oh well, oh they, you know, oh he, he look he went back and he drank again. Oh he didn't get saved. Oh oh he went back on the drugs. Oh no he didn't get saved. You you don't know what that other person is judging with in in matters of personal judgment in people's walk with the Lord. All we can do is pray for them. And recognize that in the eyes of God, we're just as bad. Amen. I hope this was a help to you today. God bless you. I love you. And we'll see you in the next one.